Yeah, so let's say, you know, T-Rex -T uh, was found about 100 years ago, and it's been an iconic dinosaur for a long time. Uh, but up until about 10 years ago, we only knew about T-Rex and a handful of, of very close relatives, all of which were large predators and all of which lived right at the end of the age of dinosaurs. But today, we now have about 20 species of Tyrannosaurus. Uh, we know more about Tyrannosaurus probably than any other group of dinosaurs. Uh, in fact, we know more about Tyrannosaurus than many groups of living animals. Uh, we know uh, how they fed, we have information on how they moved, how they grew, how they reproduced. Uh, we know something about where they fit into the larger family tree of dinosaurs and, and what sort of animals they evolved from. So in many ways, Tyrannosaurs have become a model organism or an exemplar group that scientists are using to address all sorts of questions in dinosaur research. Um, and this family tree we've compiled has helped us understand three uh, major themes that may seem surprising to a lot of people. First of all, Tyrannosaurs were actually a very ancient group of dinosaurs. They originated at least a hundred million years before T. rex lived. Second of all, the earliest Tyrannosaurs were very small animals. They were no bigger than, than a small dog. They had skulls that were just about the size of a football or, or, or a rugby ball. Uh, and for the first 80 million years of Tyrannosaur history, they were only small animals. And then third, T. rex and its closest relatives, these animals from the late Cretaceous that we knew about for all of these years, these animals only lived in North America and Asia. But now we know that early in their history, Tyrannosaurs lived all over the world. So really, I think this tells us more than anything that this great icon of prehistory, this great museum exhibit, this popular movie subject, T. rex, is merely the tip of the iceberg of the diversity of Tyrannosaurs. Uh, all Tyrannosaurs do share several features of, of their skeleton and of their biology. So all Tyrannosaurs were predators from the smallest, oldest Tyrannosaurs all the way up to T-Rex. All of them walked on two legs. All of them were fairly fast, um, although the smaller ones were a lot faster. Um, all of them had very robust, almost incisor-like teeth at the front of the jaws. These are probably useful for grasping onto prey. Uh, they had a, a very strong, fused snout that was also, again, probably useful when, when going after prey. And they had uh, an extensive system of sinuses in the skull filled with air sacs. Uh, we can speculate on what these may have, have meant functionally, but they may have allowed Tyrannosaurus to breathe more efficiently. Um, you know, having a, a comprehensive family tree is, is always important for context, just as, like we can better understand our own family history if we know, you know, how our various relatives, our aunts and uncles and cousins are, you know, all related to each other. We can better understand the family hi history of a group of animals like tyrannosaurs with the aid of a family tree. And, uh, but all these new discoveries tell us that tyrannosaurs were very different animals than the popular image often conveys. They began as small animals, and for most of their history, they lived in the shadow uh, of other giant predators. And only very late in the age of dinosaurs, only the last 20 million years of the age of dinosaurs, which was 160 million years long, uh, did tyrannosaurs evolve gigantic size and become apex predators. So T. rex, this great icon, in many ways was a very odd, very unusual tyrannosaur. Well, we're always involved in a lot of projects. That's how we like to, to keep things spicy by working on a lot of different things. But as far as, as tyrannosaurs go, we're continuing to work on, on tyrannosaurs uh, on many fronts. Uh, personally, uh, I'm now working on detailed anatomical descriptions of several species. And in doing so, this will help to further refine the family tree as well. The more we learn about anatomy, the more we learn about genealogy. Yeah. I, I think my, my overall advice to, to young people interested in science, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm still a PhD student, I'm still a student, I'm still learning, and I'm not too far removed from being a high school student who, you know, was enthused by dinosaurs, who spent weekends, you know, driving around to fossil sites around my house, you know, looking for, for invertebrate fossils. So I'm not too far removed from this myself. And, and my advice, you know, based on, on uh, my own experience in the field and the education that I've received and am still receiving, is 
to first of all just to never stop exploring never ever stop to be stop being curious you know about the world around you and never be afraid to challenge and and dinosaurs are a perfect way for young people to become interested in the world around them to start uh, to learn to start asking questions about how the world works, how the world has changed over time. Um, and, uh, you know, when you become interested in dinosaurs or any scientific subject, my advice is always to just go for it, to keep reading, to keep exploring, um, to, keep, uh, to keep asking questions.